Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we're looking at the sixth grade concept of data, specifically how we can make histograms, and we'll do it in five minutes or less. So if you've never seen a histogram before, they're going to look an awful lot like a bar graph. You see a blank histogram over here on the left. And along the y-axis, up and down, you are going to have numbers, and they're going to be in intervals of 1 or 10 or 100, depends on what you want. And then across the bottom, it's going to look like you've got places for bars right here. The only difference with a histogram and a bar graph is that a histogram is used to show ranges. So we have a lot of data over here on our right. Let's say I had a 20-sided die and I rolled it 20 different times and I just recorded my 20 different answers over here in this table. If I wanted to represent that information into a graph, I would probably choose a histogram because a histogram can let me show how many times I've rolled something within a certain range. So to get this data first out of this table, let's make, let's just make a tally chart here. So I know that the smallest number that I can make on a 20-sided die is a 1, and the biggest number I can make is a 20. It's a 20-sided die. So I'm just going to break up how many times I rolled a number, and whether it fell into the range of 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, and 16 to 20. I don't necessarily need to record each number individually. I just want to see if it falls within a range. So first I'm going to look between 1 and 5. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm just going to make some tallies here. Between 6 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I'm going to make my tally mark of 7 there. Between 11 and 15, I've just got 1, 2, 3. It doesn't look like I've got that much. And finally, the rest should be 16 through 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if you see that I have got all of my numbers split into these ranges, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these ranges and I'm going to put them as my column headers. And so 1 to 5, I'm going to say that's 6 to 10. That's 11 to 15, and then that's 16 to 20. The rest is going to look just like a bar graph. So I've got five. What we do is when you're looking at a histogram, you're going to notice that you never leave any blanks. Typically, when you're making a bar graph, all of your bars have a little bit of blank in between them. There's a little bit of space. You never put the bars right next to each other. In a histogram, you go from edge to edge of your range. The reason you do that is because this is supposed to show continuous numbers from 1 all the way up to 20. There are no blanks, there are no missing numbers that we're omitting from our histogram. So when it looks like this, it is going to look like a bar graph. What you're going to be able to do to tell that it's not a bar graph, it's a histogram, is first look at the labels for your bars. You can see there are a range right here. And then also look to make sure that there are no spaces I'll just write that right here, no spaces. The only other big term that you might be uh, running into when you're looking at a bar graph is you're looking at a term, and it might be a little bit of strange, but let me tell you what it means. Class interval. If you ever see this class interval term, it also means you're dealing with a histogram, simply because this is going to explain what is the range of each of our bars. Since this does show a continuous range, how big is that gap between one edge of our bar and the other edge of our bar? And in this case, our class interval is going to equal 5. Each of these bars is a range of 5 numbers. So whenever you see that term class interval, that is just asking you what is the range of each bar. The last thing I want to show you is that sometimes histograms can be set up a little bit differently. So if I were to go up and down looking at the addresses on my street, I might collect all of these addresses. And you see here, I still have a class interval of 10, but rather than showing each range underneath each bar, I just put each boundary number on these lines. But besides that, you can set this up exactly the same. So I put all of my data into my histogram. You see with my class intervals of 10, there are five that fall between the range of 7, 10, and up to 719. Once you start with 720 to 729, that's going to be 3. And that's going to be 3 here. And then finally, between 740 and 750 is going to be 4.